everybody, welcome to the Wild Doc White. I'm Jessica, and today's video is going to be a look inside our recently updated survival unit study. Now, this is now the third time that the study has been updated because it is one that is near and dear to our personal homeschool hearts. And as Lily has gotten older, I have just added more and more to it to make it more robust. It uses the Bear Grylls adventure books. There are 12 in the series. Um, there are two different styles of covers. Either one works. The books themselves are the same on the interior. So either one you can get your hands on will work with the study. Also, while it would be nice to have those books because so much of it is kind of in the study, I have now added so much that the books would not be required. You could technically do it without them. So let's go ahead and dive in. We're going to look at the unit study and the handbook kind of side by side because you'll use the handbook for the first week. So the survival unit study includes uh, survival resources, an introduction to survival, the blizzard challenge, the desert challenge, the jungle challenge, the sea challenge, the river challenge, the earthquake challenge, the volcano challenge, the safari challenge, the cave challenge, the mountain challenge, the Arctic challenge, the sailing challenge, and then a survival skills kind of like wrap up and a final project. Now, all of these challenges are based off of one of the Bear Girls Adventures books. Again, you will see why now there's enough included that you could technically get away without it. So we have our suggested resources. Um, there are books, games, videos, and additional activities. These would be good for the entire unit study. Then each week we have lesson plans. So this is five days worth of lesson plans. For each specific day on the first week, you're going to read a section from the survival handbook. I will show you how that would work in just a minute. There is also a YouTube playlist with a QR code for each week as well. The first week you're going to get into introduction to survival, what survival means, why it matters, and here are some extension activities. It now has writing prompts, survival STEM challenges, survival science experiments, and research options for older kids. You are going to rate your wilderness skills in the beginning, and then you're going to do it again at the end to see what your survival score is and how much you've improved. Then we're going to discuss first things first, which would be your basic first aid. Now I have now added nonfiction passages to the survival study for things like first aid, safe and sound, how to build a shelter, fire building basics, water and wild food. And then we're going to get into Bear Grylls himself, which is a bio. While you're doing those first few weeks, you will also read the handbook because we have the handbook, which also covers first aid, how to build a fire. So this is going to go in more depth. That is 54 pages that will go along with this. And that is scheduled in the first week. So you would see that here. It will tell you what pages to read for each section because it will coincide with what you're already learning. Then you have your Bear Grylls survival, his coloring page, and his biography. And then we get into the first challenge. Now, like I said, each of these challenges coincides with one of the Bear Girls adventure books, this one being the blizzard challenge. So you have five days. We're going to read surviving a blizzard, which is now the nonfiction passion, nonfiction passage that I've added. And then you're also going to read two chapters of the blizzard challenge book each day. And you're going to do something else as well. So complete the backpack activity page on day one, watch the YouTube playlist on day two, complete an extension activity of your choice on day three, play a game of your choice on day four, and complete the what I know about surviving the blizzard page on day five. Again, QR code. Each of the challenges are going to be set up very, very similar. I'll show you just a few so that you can get an idea for what I mean. So here is that nonfiction passage that we have already written. So you'll be reading about that to get some extra facts about surviving a blizzard and cold weather survival skills. Here's the backpack that you're going to pack. You will either have your child write, draw, or even like cut and paste objects that they think they would need to pack in their backpack to survive a blizzard challenge. And then the extension activities. Now we have five different writing prompts, a survival STEM challenge, which this one is building a mini snow shelter, a survival science experiment. So this is an insulation test, which keeps you the warmest. And then there are always two to three additional research options for older kids so they can really dig into it. 
you could do all of these or you can just pick one. I've only scheduled one because maybe your child really loves writing. Maybe you have a child that really loves STEM challenges. Maybe you have a child that really loves science experiments. Maybe one week you have the supplies on hand and one week you just need to have them do a writing prompt. I tried to make it as easy as possible for parents. And then we have upgraded the what I know about the blizzard. So there will be true and false. And then five facts that you have learned. Uh, this used to be a little bit uh, younger. It was just five facts. We've updated it so that it fits all ages now. I'll go ahead and show you the desert challenge, which is one more week. So the setup for the lesson plan page is the same. We still have that reading passage so we can learn how to stay safe in the hottest places on earth. We're going to fill our backpacks, our extension activities. Uh, we have five writing prompts again. We're going to design a sun shelter for the STEM challenge. We're going to focus on evaporation and water loss for our science experiment. And then we have three research options for older kids. Um, some of those would be like investigate the signs and treatments of dehydration and heat stroke, study desert survival stories like Moro Prospero of, or the Sahara explorers, explore how desert animals like camels or fennec foxes survive extreme heat. Your what you know about the desert, so true or false, and then five tips, strategies, or facts that you learn. And then we're into the jungle challenge. So all the challenges are going to be set up very, very similar. Once you get through the challenges, we have what I like to call the survival skills week. So you're going to really be spending this week doing all of the like hands on things. Um, so each day is going to be a specific skill that would help survival. So the first thing that we talk about is your final project, which is creating your own survival guidebook because you're going to be working on this all week long. So we go ahead and introduce it, tell you kind of some different ways that you can do it. And then each day you'll be focusing on a different skill. So the first day is not tying in rope skills, why it's important, which knots you should know, why they're useful, um, how you can use them in the real world. And then we have some actual activities and ideas for like hands-on practice, as well as a knot tying guide. Then on day two, you will be doing navigation and mapping skills, finding your way and mastering nature's GPS. So why navigation skills matter, tools for navigation, how to use a compass, um, using nature tricks for navigation, and then how practice makes you prepared. Here's some navigation activity ideas, like hands-on things like creating a compass course, doing a shadow stick compass, mapping your world, going on a hike and using trail markers, navigation with the stars. So all kinds of different activities you can actually do with your kids. Then we have signaling for help, seen and saved, why signaling can be a lifesaver, why signaling is essential, different types of survival signals planning your signals, real world rescue examples, and signaling smarts. Then again, activities to actually do the hands-on portion. So creating a ground signal message, practicing mirror signaling, doing some smoke-free signal fire drills, whistle and sound challenges, and dressing to be seen. The next one we have is plant and animal awareness, knowing before you touch and why awareness keeps you alive why plant animal awareness is essential, plants that could help and or hurt, um, animal awareness in the wild, and practicing with purpose. Then we have some things like a backyard plant ID walk as an activity, tracking and trailing, edible versus toxic plants, uh, wildlife watch challenge, and creating a plant and track field guide. And then the last skill is going to be improvising survival tools, making it work, with whatever you have on hand. So why improvising matters, what it could mean to you, common tools that could be used in improvising situations, um, and how to start thinking like a survivor. And then again, some improvising survival tool things like building with nature challenges, plastic bottle survival hacks, survival pack remix. So how to like use something that's in your pack as something else. Um, and playing a game. And then there are also answer keys for the true and false pages. And of course, it wouldn't be a wall doc way study without games. Before this update, survival unit study had one game. I really decided 
I wanted more because there were so many fun topics on this study. So we now have the basic survival bingo, animal track and scat match, a medicinal plant match, a would you survive survival scenario game, the ultimate survival jeopardy, and a survive and thrive wilderness trivia survival game. Now we'll show you each of those individually. But before I do that, I do want to say if you have ever purchased the survival unit study, when it was survival school, which was the original or survival unit study when it was updated the first time, you should have already received an email from me with the ability to download this update because we give all updates to you for life when you buy anything from us. If you did not, email me and we will get you the updated copy. The first game we have is the survival bingo. So this would be your calling cards. You could either leave them whole or cut them out. That would be up to you. If you cut them out, you could just randomly draw one. If you leave them whole, you could go across or up and down. Basically, you would call a symbol out and then just mark it. And whoever filled their board up horizontally, vertically, or diagonally first would be the winner. Next up, we have the two matching or memory games. One is the animal tracks. So you have, for example, you could flip these over and play memory, or you could just have your kids match them. That would be up to you. But you have like one that has the track and the animal's name, and then one that has the animal name and a description of what the track would look like so that you can easily start learning the tracks of each animal. Then the other one is a medicinal herb or medicinal plant match. So for example, again, you could play memory or just match them depending on what level you wanted to do. But here is peppermint. And then on the other one, it says what you could use it for. So peppermint eases nausea, digestion issues, and headaches. and has a cooling effect that helps with bug bites or mild inflammation. So as you play, you would learn what it looks like and what you could potentially use it for in the wild. Next, we have the ultimate survival jeopardy. So the categories are survival basics, extreme environments, what would bear do, emergency know-how, and gear up. And we have from 100 to 500 points. So you have one page that has the questions, or in this case, technically the answers, then the other page that has the answers, in this case, technically the questions, and then you have your uh, page where they would write their answers down. So if you have multiple people playing, you would just print multiple of these page and give everybody one and then see who had the highest score at the end and they would be the winners. Next, we have the Would You Survive a Survival Scenario Game. So you have all these cards and you would just take turns asking each other, for example, if you're caught in a lightning storm on a mountaintop, where do you go? And they have three options. And then you have the correct choice and kind of the reason why. So down to the tree line because higher ground increases lightning risk lightning strike risk. If they get it correct, they would keep the card. If not, they wouldn't. It would just kind of go back in the deck and whoever has the most cards at the end wins. So you would just kind of play until you went through all of them. You could do multiple times um, in a row or you could play it multiple times throughout the unit study to see if you could get better at learning to survive these scenarios. The last game is the survive and thrive wilderness trivia survival game. So it is a board game. You would roll the dice move that many spaces and whatever color you land on, you would try to answer one of those cards. Each color is a different type of question. So the blue are the wilderness survival preparation. The purple is basic wilderness first aid. This is first aid know-how. Uh, red is survival kit essentials. The orange is basic needs for survival. And the yellow is the will to survive and mental grit. And each time you answer a question correctly from a different category, you earn a different token. And whoever earns all six tokens and then returns back to start first is the winner.